Hi everyone, welcome to welcome back to see the stories on the TR News Show. Now, before we jump into our discussion, I want to ask Hans here. Mm. Now, Hans, yeah. when was the first time you learned um, English? Mm. And then uh, I'm sure we we all uh, uh, faced this difficulties. What kind of difficulty that you had that you can remember? Right I before learned? I moved from Surabaya to the UK, so. Uh -huh. And the difficulty was actually because I was speking in the, the thick Surabayan accent. Oh no, I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and I needed to, um, you know, adjust myself to that local, how, how the locals spoke right, back in the right, day in, okay. in the UK. So, so that was um, the difficulty. That was, that you... Yeah, that was my first encounter with English because mm -hmm. I needed to. Right. In okay. order for me to survive at school and also right, right. in daily life. So, right. yeah. Well, for right. me, when I first moved to, to the US, mm. it's not so much as speaking it that I had a, a difficulty with. And it's when I'm brother? doing, when I'm writing, when I'm writing. doing tests, you know. Because, you know what? My first uh, semester there, mm -hmm. I can say that pretty much I failed all the subjects. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want to know that, but. Um... They made the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, today in our studio, we have English to Knock the Door organizers, Shalintia Rifani Dita and Yosefa Debrina Rati Puspasari. Now, they're going to... Pusparisa. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Man, dyslexia coming in. <laughs> now, they are going to talk about uh, teaching English to underprivileged children. Mm. Now, thank you guys for coming in, uh, Eva and Shali. Shali. Uh, that's thank you so much uh, for coming to our studio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Can you guys tell us a little bit before we go too far with the questions, right? Because we're very, very curious. Uh, tell us about the organization that you guys have here, English to Knock the Door. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about okay. that. Okay, so um, our, our organization, English to Knock the Door, was born in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, it, so we uh, currently operate in Rawabuaya, mm. uh, where, we were, uh, where our vision was to um, share meaningful, uh, to um, give meaningful impacts to the children in Rawabuaya. Okay, Rawabuaya is in West Jakarta, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, West Jakarta. So, West Jakarta. Right. so uh, you were mentioning about uh, meaningful impact. Mm -hmm. um, so, can you elaborate more about um, what impact that you want to, um, you want them to have yeah. in this, uh, in this sense is actually um, speaking English? So, by speaking English, Speaking, um, like speaking, is like way of co us to communicate with mm -hmm. each other, right? Yeah, so yeah, we want right. to build the, we want the kids to build confidence. Mm. That's why we want to um, teach them English and help them to help to mentor them, build their confidence to speak English. Mm. Okay. Because it's okay. important for their future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right, okay. Right. So you mm. were mentioning about how, how is it important for them? Mm -hmm. uh, but Eva, can you tell me? What is the importance of English, of speaking English, in, in today's um, setting, in day-to-day in -day basis? Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, many people know, uh, like we just talk right now, mm -hmm. we use English as daily basis. Mm -hmm. And um, many children in Rawabuaya, mm -hmm. uh, when we first uh, met them, uh, they share stories that um, not all of the schools in Jakarta mm -hmm. also uh, provide English. So I think it is uh, the most crucial one to teach English for them. So we, we hope that uh, they can also um, improve their English because yeah, um, some of them uh, for the small groups, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they, they, they need to, you know, uh, uh, learn more about English because yeah, um, some of their families also uh, not uh, cannot not, not very uh -huh. not very proficient, proficient in English. Uh -huh. and I see. We want to support them. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, because you said that you're located in uh, West uh, Jakarta, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, is, was there a specific reason why as to why you chose that location? That's for one, and then I'm yeah. going to continue with So you. our founders want to create meaningful changes nearby. Mm -hmm. So we started okay. at home, like close by. Oh, home, so, so you live yeah. in oh, okay. West Jakarta. Yeah. Okay. So our founders okay. live nearby the area where we teach. That's mm -hmm. why we chose um, Rawabuaya. But then as we went by, we noticed that um, we, um, in the area, they have a lot of a, a large number of children who are actually in need of English education. That's mm. why we chose to establish um, our place there. Mm, mm. Okay. Now, this is my next one. How would you then 
uh, filter the un underprivileged kids to be a, a participant of your organization or your program? Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, uh, we open to all the children yeah. in Rawabuaya yeah. as long as um, they can join our uh, class. Uh -huh. okay. And we also um, encourage uh, the community and also the children itself to promote um, to their families and their children mm. to join yeah to join our community as well. So. We use, uh, you know, a word of mouth strategy. Yes. So yeah, right. uh, I think uh, it is one of the most effective way to um, ask the people, the children, uh, who need it the most. So, uh, what is the level of acceptance for them um, towards English to Nakdra, which is your initiative uh, in this sense? Because we all know that uh, not not all layers in Indonesia would actually think that English is very important mm -hmm. because uh, sometimes when you go to a certain place and um, you're finding uh, people uh, speaking English and that should be a very little amount of people speaking English in the community and people would, would perceive like um, as a, you know, in, in this case, uh, some, some people might see that as arrogancy. Mm -hmm. you know, people see that as arrogant <laughs> stuff like that. And mm -hmm. how, how is the level of acceptance in, in that particular uh, layer uh, in which you are teaching? And also, um, how can you give them the understanding of the importance of, of, of learning English? I think um, the level of acceptance is Quite, they're very excited when mm. we when mm -hmm. we first when we come to teach them English yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. because I, I mean like kids these days they watch sports um, sports um, events mm. yes. most of them are in English that's why they're True. quite they're True. quite excited to actually so we're we talking English. about uh, football football and basketball, basketball. Right. yeah 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 yeah, like yeah the commentators are actually uh, doing it in English mm -hmm. yeah. so, uh, mm -hmm. the ones that you actually watch on TV now yeah exactly. of course when you're actually now with we have a lot of gadgets social medias of course they also hear so it becomes uh, like a, um, a routine in their ears right when they're listening exactly. and then they try to now how do you then um, uh, kind of, you kind of mentioned it a little bit by the word of mouth. But is there any other uh, strategy or or something that you actually do to get them to come to you and uh, learn more about uh, uh, you know English? Uh, actually, sometimes from social media because mm. uh, some of oh. their parents also um, use social media. So uh, the parents TikTok. who yeah uh, <laughs> no we use Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, some parents uh, uh, who use Instagram they also um, encourage um, their children to join our community. Mm. So. Mm. Okay. Um, when it comes to uh, learning English, uh, we all know that uh, we did learn English at school and, and um, any other institution. Um, we have different, we had different curriculums, right? Yeah. But uh, for your particular initiative, what curriculum or teaching materials do you use and how do teachers, uh, as of you and, and your friends, um, adapt to the needs of underprivileged children? Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, uh, we use uh, we divide our classes into two. Mm. The first one is the small class; it is for four up to seven years old, and okay. the second one is for the big, the big class. Mm -hmm. uh, it is for eight mm. up to twelve years old, mm. and uh, we design our you know our lessons based on their needs and capabilities mm. as well. Mm. And for basically, uh, in general, uh, we. Uh, use basic grammar mm. and uh, daily or everyday vocabulary mm. uh, to make a strong foundation for them to know more about English. Mm -hmm. And uh, to make things more fun, uh, we use um, popular uh, trends like uh, the Olympics for the last one so we can discuss oh, nice. about sport. Yeah. So yeah, it is make, make uh, the class more fun and mm. engaging between the volunteers and also the children itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's very cool. Now I'm thinking about then uh, you and your students, uh, the methods of teaching because again not everybody can learn the same way. Yeah, Some, I agree. You know, yeah, one <laughs> kid can learn more with uh, just looking at you guys, and one other kid next to him can learn better if you write something on the on the board and You're probably drawing drawing something. Now, what kind of methods do you have uh, going uh, go, uh, get going with these kids? Uh, basically, we, we use uh, several methods. Um, the first one is like this. This is, uh, we use, oh, um, yeah, this is... Uh, is it crosswords? Yes, right? Oh, <laughs> to so make things more fun. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 
and then um, interesting, yeah. Yeah, this is for uh, you know uh, like uh, the exercises. Uh -huh. mm. uh, but sometimes we also use um, art and crafts, so mm. uh -huh. it keeps uh, the classes more it? fun. Right, mm -hmm. All right. Sure. Right, and you so, use uh, what's again? Uh, drawings? drawings, drawings, coloring, uh -huh, art and crafts. So mm -hmm. yeah, it keeps uh, the children more focused mm -hmm. on our lessons. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Now, do you have any any um, maybe like we may want to call them project, you know, based uh, learning type with the the uh, the kids that you you have going on? Anything like that? You, you you get them in a group of let's say two or three, and then you get them to do something. They they have to come up as a group because I think that's one of the things that we see a lot these days in, in schools, you know, not just um, after school program, but in school. Do you have something like that too for, for these guys? Uh, so uh, when we uh, create a class, mm. we also divide our volunteers with um, our children into some groups. Right, so okay. they can um, make, uh, be more focused, be more focused right, okay. intensive, and, um, uh, you know, it can uh, hone their bravery too mm. to right. oh, communicate true. Right. Um, with, with, the, with the teacher. Now, you were mentioning about the volunteers. Now, mm -hmm. how do you find the volunteers and filter mm -hmm. them uh, in a sense of, uh, you know, how, how they teach? Because the method of teaching mm -hmm. should be in line with uh, your setting as well. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? I mean... So, we volunteers. usually post our upcoming classes on our social media mm. or other uh, volunteering platform. Mm. So that's where they usually find our community and join. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, in terms of like training and um, kind of like um, way of teaching, um, so because anyone can join our community, they just have to join and chip in. Um, we, um, we don't actually um, expect them to um, have like um, a certain you know, a certain way of teaching, so mm. they can just come in and teach. Yeah. As for the materials, we prepare, um, our committee members prepare mm. all of the materials, um, then that, that then we give them, uh, we give to the volunteers to review and they could share feedback to us. Mm. So that's how, you know, you get like, um, we get feedbacks from the volunteers mm. so that, you know, when the when our materials is too hard, we know how uh, how to adju make adjustments. So you have rosters as well, right. Right. For, for the schedule and stuff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. ah. Can you tell us how big the uh, the roster is of, of volunteers at yeah. the moment? The size, the size of, of volunteers uh, that you volunteers. have and the teachers. Um, at the moment, at the moment, we have hundred. What? Whoa! Yeah. Stop it right there. A <laughs> hundred. Yeah, because uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we welcome uh, many volunteers, uh, and you uh -huh. can jo uh, join us only for uh, one class. So uh -huh. it is okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. So something that we can also look so forward it's to. Very flexible. Yeah. And oh. you have right now. There's only one center for the. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. The English to knock the door. There's uh. only one center in Rawabuai at the moment. There's no other centers for you guys. And you guys got about a hundred volunteers to teach these these. Kids. But how many kids? Um, yes. How many yes. children uh, do you guys teach so far? Around thirty children. Thirty children. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. all right. Very very interesting, right? Well, guys, um, we're gonna continue talking with Eva and Shalin, and uh, but we have to take a break for now because uh, we have something that we need to prepare before <laughs> or, <laughs> or after the yes. break. So stay here because they will give us a test. We will gonna we, we will get and we will do some tests. All right, guys, uh, stay tuned on the 3R News Show.